All right, guys. Why is your beard turning red, or why do you have a red beard? On your, if you still have hairs on your on your head, why are they a different color? Maybe, perhaps, you know, me myself, I have a bit dark blonde, almost brownish hair natively on my head. I once had it like you're all probably by now a very so <clears throat> a very you know know much about it i have quite a, a reddish red beard so let's go we're gonna talk about it a bit about how it comes and what to do about it spoiler alert you can't do much about it so grab yourself some coffee let's get talk about ginger beards Meanwhile, I will order some food because I'm quite hungry and it's already five o'clock right here. I think some pizza. Of course, it's often called ginger beard, but you know, you're all, you're all about it. Uh, we're going to talk about red beards. It will be the, I think, pepperoni. As you probably can see in the photos, if I, you know, don't forget putting on photos you can see i had once uh, originally dark blonde hair on my head but a quite red beard so let's talk about outcomes order to my place let it in. it's because of a certain uh, gene called the mc1 our gene, which plays a crucial role in your hair color and especially turning your beard hair red. But how can you get partially red hair? Just like me, if you've seen photos, I have dark, darker hair on top and quite a reddish, sometimes in the in the sun, almost orangey kind of beard. So how do you get it? It's because a mutated version of the MC1R genome gene. Uh, this gene is a key protein uh, and regulates the hair color everywhere on your body. And when it mutates, it can become red. That's one of the reasons why red hair is quite... Um, you don't have many red-haired people, but later on talking about that it's an inherited gene most of the time uh, and one mutated gene genome genes in the mc1r make it become your beard to be red if you have two mutations your hair will be overall red you know also on your head and other places these genes are most prominent in Northern Europe. I'm from the Netherlands, so Northern Europe. Uh, with most likely the British Isles, you know, like Ireland, England, Scotland, as the, the epicenter, the, the most important part, um, perhaps the origin part of this MC1R genome. It's quite difficult, but uh, I looked it all up, and it's quite interesting also. But you know, I'm not a genome ex expert, so it's, it's quite new for me. But of course, with the today's globalization, uh, the genes will be everywhere in the world. Your beard, however, turning red, uh, most likely means that somewhere, someone in your family. Is a carrier of those genes and it's you know it's trickled down into your own genes so most likely one in your family uh, maybe a great 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 grandfather you know it's it's really interesting how genes work but perhaps a great 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 grandfather was red-headed and then it can all trickle down and perhaps your brothers and sisters your your parents your grandparents don't even have to be 
red-headed or partially red-headed for you to become fully red-headed or partially red-headed. Of course, if you want to know more about all these genomes and how it works and uh, how they be can become activated and uh, recessive genes and all that kind of stuff, um, you have to f follow a... Uh, I know on an expert channel about all those kind of stuff, but this is just uh, the, the you know the, the preschool version talk about these genes. So it all trickled down from your family into presumably you, as it's also for me the case. Um, for me, it's quite simple. However, my father has black hair, so doesn't really come from his part of the family. My mum, however, has red hair, you know, like like dog. Um, you can almost say Scottish or Irish. However, I'm not Irish or nor Scottish, I wish, but I'm not. Red hair. So for me, it's quite easy to determine where the genes come from. My mother has my... Uh, uncle of that side also has also a bit of a reddish beard but he has to shave it because he's in the army <laughs> never mind <laughs> it's not always as simple as in my case of course because as i stated before you can inherit those genes from your great 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 grandfathers even without showing it up you know in your direct family and can still express its genes in you many generations later. Just like many other uh, traits, you know, like um, the shape of your chin, your nose, uh, colors of your hair, colors of your eyes, is of course also a very important one, which... Um, very interesting to me, but also a bit difficult because of all the science and all the biology behind it. Through red airs, you know, like like Uli, like my mom, are actually quite rare, especially if you look at globally. As I stated before, if you look in Europe, it's a little bit less rare. However, it's still one or two percent of the world's population has natively red hair. Red beards, however, are way less uncommon or are way more common than fully red haired people. But it doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's a uh, genetic marvel because of the earlier discussed uh, gene inheritance, uh, loads of loads of people carry the, the potential for a luscious, amazing, lovable red beard. So in a nutshell, this is um, how you can get a red beard without even having red hair on top. I hope you all find it quite interesting because I find it really interesting and also really difficult because I dropped out of biology like as early as I could in school. See you all another time and uh, have a nice day. Ciao. Look at my beard. It's amazing, isn't it? Luscious red beard. Almost like a pot.